Is there a conflict between the belief as a scientist and the belief as a spiritual person? There can't be. Truth is truth. And this was argued out by uh, Thomas Aquinas back in the Middle Ages. So, if you have faith in your faith, you cannot have any fear about what science is going to teach you. My religion teaches me that God created the universe. My science teaches me how he did it. And the great thing about that, from a spiritual point of view, is it means that by knowing that God did it this way instead of all the other ways that God could have done it, you get to learn something about God. God manages to do things that are both rational, logical, and beautiful. While science and religion are very closely related, they're not the same thing, and they're not one attempting to replace the other. Science is a collection of human-made theories that attempt to describe and give flesh to the truth. But they're always incomplete. My science will never have the answer to everything. There will always be more things that I need to know. So while my science is approaching the truth, it never quite gets there. Religion is just in the other direction. It starts with truths. It starts with things that I know in my heart that God loves me. I know and I believe that there was Jesus Christ who did these incredible things that the eyewitnesses so believed in that they were willing to go to death rather than deny them. But I don't understand it. My religious truths always need a deeper understanding. My scientific understanding always needs to come closer to the truth. And so they're both on the same road, but going in different directions. And it's because they're so similar that people can see them as possibly being in conflict. And together, they give you the strength to both appreciate the truth I know, the science I see, and yet recognize I don't know it all. And there's still more stuff to learn. The first chapters of Genesis claim that the sole designer of the universe is God. And that the creation of the world happened in six historical days followed by a day of rest. Next, Brother Guy talks about how our understanding of the cosmos is inspired by the Genesis account. And how the story of creation, at the time it was written, brought about a radically different idea on the origins of the universe. As a scientist, I see that the universe is beautiful. It didn't have to be beautiful. I see that the universe is logical. It didn't have to be logical. I could envision some kind of God who just arbitrarily does things on whim from moment to moment. That's not the way that our God works. I could see a God who makes things very rational and very logical, but very functional, so you see all the, the, the gears and levers. And No, that's not the way God does it. God is not the God who causes crops to grow and lightning to strike down from the ceiling. God is the God who was there from before the beginning, who said, let there be. This is a radically new idea of what God was all about that no other culture had come up with. That is the inspiration of Genesis. To treat Genesis like a science book is crazy because they didn't even have a science book back when that was written. Uh, you know, chapter two of Genesis doesn't even agree with chapter one. That's not the point. The point is, no matter how you see the universe being created, the underlying message consistent in all the different creation stories in the Bible is that God did it. God did it deliberately, rationally, beautifully, as an act of love. And I cannot imagine a more radical idea about the nature of the universe than that. Or one that better justifies why we do science. At the time, whoever wrote chapter 1 of Genesis was taking the best science of that day, Babylonian science. The Babylonians said the universe is a big flat plain with a dome and water above and below it. Look at the rain, of course, there's water above. You dig a hole and you get a well, of course, there's water below. They were just looking at the universe. And that was as big as they could imagine. What the Genesis author did was he took this cosmology from the Babylonians and he put a twist to it. He said, no, it was not by accident. It was the deliberate, loving act of a God who was outside of nature. You know, I always kind of just learned that the creation stories were just that. They were stories. They weren't meant to be true. But behind them, there was spiritual truth. And I liked what he said, that the underlining message that we can take from all of those is that God did it. 
God was the creator. Yeah. So even though they don't agree, there's always that truth that God created it. Yeah, and I really like how he was talking about, um, you know, there's a reason mm -hmm. behind it all. I thought that was really cool. So what about you guys? How do you make sense of how the universe was created? Well, when I was younger, my parents, you know, they read me the Bible and they told me that God created it and it was good. So God created us and we are good, even if people don't understand why he created us to his image. There's no way, like, how complicated everything is with us being made of billions and billions of cells. I don't think, like, something as complicated as that could be just made. Yeah. Someone, something great, something completely amazing had to have their hand in that, and I think that was God. I know that was God because it's just something so amazing and so wonderful. It ain't something simple that just popped out of nowhere. He's really the Alpha and the Omega. He's been there from the beginning, and he's, he'll be there till the end. In his hypothesis of the primeval atom, George Lemaitre, a physicist and Roman Catholic priest, originally proposed what became known as the Big Bang Theory. It is this idea that all the matter existing in the universe was created from one instantaneous massive explosion. In his observations of the movement of galaxies, Lemaitre theorized that they must have all originated from the same point at the same time. Bringing into question who or what set the universe on its course it is today. Was it God who pulled the trigger on the Big Bang? Those are the tough questions for anyone to answer, but perhaps even more difficult is understanding how we as humans came to be. How exactly did we get here? And what was the purpose of our creation? This is what we posed to the teens on the street. Let's check it out. Uh, humans were created to make God's world a better place. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know why we are put on this earth. I think humans were created to do what we have done today. I believe humans are like my brothers and sisters because that's what it says in the Bible. And God made them. Well, God created us, so um, he created us in his image, like I said. And God has a purpose for us. Everybody asks that question, you know, why are we here on earth? You know, so basically only God knows. I believe everybody's created equally, and at the end of the day, we're all brothers and sisters. I believe that um, God created uh, a world that he wants people, I guess it's like a, like a little test run, like a rehearsal or something and everybody has a different attitude towards things and he wants everybody to see, he wants to see if everybody can interact with each other or not. That's such a tricky question. <laughs> I don't know. So what do you guys think? What's our purpose in the universe and what's our existence? I've always believed that, th um, from my basic religion even, that we were put on this earth to know love and serve God, whether it's doing it through other people or doing it just glorious prayers to him. I think that we're put on this earth so we could learn about God and learn who he is. I think one of our purposes for being here is to love one another. I think God sent us here for a reason and we might not always know it. We may go through our entire lives fulfilling it and we may never know what it was but when we go to heaven, when we go into eternal rest with our Father, he's gonna let us know and he's gonna be like, I'm proud of you. You did this for me. Thank you. I think one of the reasons God created us was because he had so much love that he wanted to share so he made like an entire human race to share it with, you know? St. Thomas Aquinas wrote, The goal of human existence is union and eternal fellowship with God. The Catholic Church's answer to the meaning of life question is simple. Love God and love others, which is exactly what Jesus explained to the disciples in Matthew 22. Let's go back to our spotlight guest, Brother Guy. Well, he'll explain how love is central to God's creation. Let's take a look. 